Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go through another FRQ for AP Human Geography. We're doing another Unit 2 FRQ on the UAE and Portugal. We're going to be looking at population pyramids and population composition. So the population pyramids kind of go to different prompts, so we're going to look at them when they're needed. So we'll start with this one on Portugal because it relates to the question. The question is, describe the rate of natural increase for Portugal. Now, on the AP exam and on the actual FRQ document, it's in black and white. However, it doesn't really need to be in color. I just put it in color for the sake of visualization on my slideshow here. But we know that males are on the left and females are on the right, and we have the percentages so we can compare how prevalent they are within the country. So we can actually look at the general trend and determine the population's natural increase rate. We can see that as time has gone on, within the past 40 years or so, the number of people in the age cohorts has declined. So we have 3.7% of the population that is male, 4% is female between the ages of 45 to 49. But we look between the ages of 0 and 4, it's 2.2 and 2.1, which is getting close to half. So we can say that the population is in decline. Now how does that relate to the rate of natural increase here? Well, that means that the rate of natural increase is negative. Now, some people would say that the natural increase rate is just low. But a low natural increase rate can mean it's 1 or 2. And since that's a positive number, it's above 0, that means that the population is growing. And so mean, since we can see here that the base of the pyramid is shrinking, that shows population decline. That shows an aging population. And that is accompanied by a negative natural increase rate. If you Google up natural increase rate of Portugal, it is a negative number. B, describe one limitation of using the population pyramids provided for data analyzation. So you could talk about these pyramids particularly, or just kind of any population pyramid, because most of the time we're looking at pyramids of countries. So what's the limitation of using a pyramid of a country? Well, for one, we don't know what's happening within the countries. We don't know regions where there's a lot of old people, or maybe regions where there's not a lot of old people, but a lot of young people, like a college town. So it doesn't show any of the population composition at a subnational or a regional level within the countries. For example, if we look at a population pyramid of the United States, we don't know what's happening inside of North Dakota. We don't know what's happening in Oklahoma or Nebraska. We only look at the United States as a whole of a country. So it doesn't show differences between rural and urban areas either. It doesn't capture movement in and without the country as well. One could argue it does if there's a ton of movement. If we look at the UAE, there's a lot of migration of males. So that's going to be captured in the population pyramid. But if we look at the population pyramid of Portugal, we can't really determine where migration is occurring and what ages and what gender these migrants are. It also doesn't show socioeconomic data as well. It doesn't show the social status. It doesn't show the income earners as well within the population. Maybe the income earners are very high for young people because of technological advancements in business. Part C, explain one cause for the skewed sex ratio in the UAE. So if you look at the population pyramid, it kind of looks like a turret on the top of a car, like a little minigun, but it does have a skewed sex ratio. Now, what, what gender is more prevalent? Well, if we look at the pyramid, it's blue, more blue. It's male. So we see a lot more males compared to females within the country. Why? Guest workers. The UAE is in stage three of the DTM. They're going to have a lot of manufacturing and secondary sector jobs, and that's going to bring in a lot of guest workers. And most guest workers are male. Most international migrants, we know this from Ravenstein's Laws of Migration, most international migrants are male, and they're going to be traveling for economic purposes. So the UAE has a booming economy. Their economy is growing rapidly, and it's creating a high demand for labor, particularly in construction and services and manufacturing, and that's going to attract male guest workers. Many jobs in the UAE are also traditionally male-dominated. Women will enter the workforce and develop their careers later on in the country's development, and that's going to lead to a higher recruitment of men from labor-exporting countries, countries with high amounts of labor. Maybe they have shortages of jobs or just excess labor. Guest work typically involves temporary contracts resulting in an influx of male workers, and they come here alone without their families. So that's why we don't see an increase in females. We only see an increase in males because they're not bringing their families with them. So what's one way that organizations may attempt to diminish the skewed sex 
ratio. Essentially, they're trying to balance this out. We have a lot of males coming into the country. What's a way we can increase the number of females coming into the country? Organizations can advocate for the creation of incentives for companies to hire women. So they want companies to hire more women, particularly international companies to hire women from other countries, such as tax breaks or subsidies. They give them tax breaks if they have a certain threshold of women, a certain proportion of their employment is women, or they'll give them subsidies or grants or other kinds of funding. They can advocate for policies that allow migrant workers to bring their families, and that can help balance the sex ratio as you bring in more women into the country. It may not balance it perfectly, but it can balance it greater than what it already is. They can establish mentorship programs and other organizations like child care services that create a more favorable environment for female workers or just a more favorable environment for families so men can bring their families with them. It's not seen as a place that's unsafe or just not great to have families or even start families. Part E, explain one reason for why the life expectancy in Portugal is higher than that of the UAE. So one thing that just comes to my mind is Portugal's more developed. They probably have better healthcare systems. So they have better, more accessible healthcare systems in Portugal. They have more diets, more diverse diets, more access to different foods like fruits, vegetables, and proteins. And that contributes to better overall health. Better healthcare and medical education leads to more efficient services and understanding of diseases and health issues. They also just have a better and more developed and robust economy than the UAE. And that leads to better access to more expensive medical technologies or more expensive medications. And you can also give the kind of opposite of these responses. So you could say that the UAE has a worse healthcare system. It's less accessible. They have a worse economy, so they cannot afford medical technologies or that people cannot afford medications. The di diets are not as diverse or the diets are worse. You could say just the opposite of these responses. And that would be perfectly acceptable. Part F, explain one political effect that it could occur in Portugal as a result of its current population change. So we established in Part A that they have a declining population, they have a negative rate of natural increase, and they're pretty much an aging population. We see a lot more middle-aged and elderly compared to kids. So what's a political effect that can occur as a result of that? Well, with an aging population, we see a declining birth rate, and that may cause for the implementation of pro-natalist policies, which will stimulate the fertility rates. Pro-natalist policies could be like tax breaks for having multiple kids and that's going to incentivize having multiple children or to have paid um, maternity leaves as well and that can provide a cushion for working parents that need money and jobs to support their kids we could also put in pro-immigration policies to bring in more people to work and that's going to limit the economic loss because as the population ages and those people retire that's going to open up a lot of jobs and if you have a lower number of working age uh, citizens you're going to want to bring in more people to fill in those jobs that way the economy doesn't suffer with a high elderly population, you're going to impact party platforms, agendas, and election outcomes. Issues that are prevalent for elderly populations like health care are going to be what's on the agenda and what's the focus for elections. It's also going to decrease the government funding on education because we have a lot less kids being born. And they're going to focus it over onto health care because old people have higher needs. They're going to break their hips more often and they have a lot more drugs to take and get prescribed. Part G, explain one cause for decreasing agriculture densities in countries with similar demographic trends to that in Portugal. I don't know why I gave the UAE pyramid here, but we can just look at it for aesthetic purposes. So Portugal, aging population. How is that going to cause decreasing agriculture densities? Well, urbanization for better job opportunities, education, living conditions. That's going to reduce the number of people engaged in agriculture, and that's going to decrease the agriculture density. Less farmers, more land. That's going to decrease the fraction. As economies develop, there's a shift away from agriculture, and typically it goes from agriculture to manufacturing to service industries. We could repurpose the agriculture land for residential, commercial, or industrial use, and as farming becomes more efficient through technological advancements like mechanization and sprinkler systems, fewer workers are going to be needed in agriculture, and that's going to decrease the agriculture density. So what are some takeaways from this FRQ? So there are seven points on this FRQ, and every FRQ you're going to take on the AP exam. There's seven points. Each part is one point. There's no partial credits. There's no half points. There's no extra credits. FRQs in your AP exam are 50% of your score, so they are important, and you're going to get some points on them. 
when we talk about the content, the natural increase rate, when it's above zero, that means we have population growth. It may be very slow if it's getting close to zero, or it may be very high if it's further away from zero. But what this means is that the crude birth rate is greater than the crude death rate. The natural increase rate is below zero if the crude death rate is greater than the crude birth rate. There's more people dying than being born. That's population decline. Population pyramids are usually at a country scale, a national scale. We're looking at a country. That's how the data is limited. And they don't provide information on the population composition within the country. We can't look at particular regions, states, or provinces. In aging populations, pro-immigration policies can try to alleviate the repercussions of a low CBR because it brings in labor to take over jobs. Agriculture densities decrease when you have less farms and less farmland. Countries typically move from agriculture to manufacturing to services as they develop. Initial urbanization is due to manufacturing. So we go to initial urbanization from the manufacturing sector taking off. Think of the Industrial Revolution. That's what got industry started in the United Kingdom, the United States, Germany, China, and that's what created the first major cities and really took them off as economic hubs. And then later on in their development journey, they start to focus on retail and other services. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really does help me out and it costs zero dollars. I have some free resources for you in the description down below if you'd like to use them. If you have any AP Human Geography related questions, whatsoever don't hesitate to leave a comment down below the video or send me a message on discord i'll see you guys in the next video though adios